Examination of the cranial nerves gives us a way to look at the brainstem all the way from its most rostral extent to its most caudal extent. If we look at an enlarged model of the brainstem, we realize that there are actually two cranial nerves that are tracks of the brain that are just at the top of the brainstem, cranial nerves number one and two. And then for the three main divisions of the brainstem, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla, we can divide the cranial nerves into each one of these three sections. Cranial nerve number three and four are in the midbrain. Cranial nerves number five through eight are in the pons, and nine through 12 are in the medulla. So the cranial nerves can be divided into two for the midbrain, four for the pons, and four for the medulla. The second anatomical point that's important to remember is that for all the cranial nerves, except for one minor exception that we're not going to focus on, the clinical findings are on the same side as the involved cranial nerve in its nucleus. The last point that we need to keep in mind is that these cranial nerves, again, gives us, give, give us valuable Y levels on the vertical axis of where we may be in the brainstem. And that combined with long track findings, findings from those descending and ascending tracks are powerful in localizing brainstem lesions or brainstem pathology. So let's look at these cranial nerves in a little bit more detail.